Hey there, church family. Christina here with you as we reflect on chapters 4 through 7 in the book of Hosea. In the previous chapters, we learned that God has called another prophet, Hosea, to warn the people of Israel to stop being rebellious and return to him. We know in the Old Testament, time and time again, God raises up prophets to rebuke, warn, and prophesy to the people of Israel. And like a broken record, they stubbornly refuse to listen until they learn what their punishment will be, and then they repent and cry out to God to relent, and he does. And then they forget his faithfulness, and they turn away, worship other gods and idols, and on it goes. Now in our reading today in chapters 4, 5, and 7, God is using Hosea to reprimand the leaders, the priests specifically. He says in chapters 4, verses 6 and 7, My people are being destroyed because they don't know me. Since you priests refuse to know me, I refuse to recognize you as my priests. And since you've forgotten the laws of your God, I will forget to bless your children. The more priests there are, the more they sin against me. They've exchanged the glory of God for the shame of idols. And in another translation on this last line, it says, they will turn their glory into shame. I mean, these are some pretty harsh words for the leaders of God's chosen people. And as I read the Old Testament with a 21st century mindset, I have to remember that without the priests, most of the people in that day would not know the scriptures at all. It wasn't like there was copies of them in every home, like we have our Bibles everywhere we go. And only about 15 to 20 percent of the population would have been able to read them. So God was reminding the religious leaders that it was their responsibility to not just have the knowledge of God personally, but for them to teach it. And so not only are they not teaching the people about God and how to keep his commands and to worship him, but as more priests are joining the ranks, they're doing it for their glory, not God's. As I reflected on what this means for us today, I'm first so grateful to God for the leaders that he's given us at Church of the Front Range, humble servant leaders who preach the full counsel of God's word and encourage us to be in his word daily, as we're doing today, and to seek God's face and guidance in the place of prayer and to give God all the glory due his name. The mission of our church is that, quote, we exist to baptize people into the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and to teach them to obey all God commands. And to do this through our values of unwavering faith, unshakable hope, uncommon love, undivided dependence, unsparing generosity, and uncompromising obedience. So, although I'm so grateful for our pastors who live this out for us through sermon messages and leading us in worship on the weekends and Wednesday nights, we, as the body of Christ, are to pass this on to others and not shirk our responsibilities as we all have opportunities to share the good news with others, whether that be in our family, with our friends, co-workers, classmates, etc. I think sometimes we can try and make excuses for not sharing because we don't have the gift of teaching or evangelism. We will all be held to account for our words and actions, or lack thereof, as it says in 2 Corinthians 5.10, For we must all stand before Christ to be judged. We will each receive whatever we deserve for the good or evil we have done in this earthly body. Do we want to be standing one day before a Heavenly Father and have to say we're sorry for missed opportunities? For not opening our mouth and telling someone about Jesus because we let self-consciousness or shyness get in the way? As an introvert myself, I constantly have to ask God to get myself out of the way so that I'll be used by him for his purposes. Even though in our reading today, the priests had the opposite problem in that they loved the spotlight and let their own glory get in the way of being used for God for his purposes, those of us who are happy to have others take the spotlight can use that as an excuse to avoid our duty and responsibility as Christ followers. Someone once told me, that we don't want Jesus to be the best kept secret. That really spoke to me. Because if I'm quick to share with someone what the best restaurant is or the best road trip I've taken or any number of things that we might rave about, why wouldn't I do that about God, who literally is the best thing 
in my life. So let's not be like the priests of Hosea's time, who were all about themselves, but be those who will be quick to open our mouths, to share personal testimonies, and tell people how great our God is. Because think about it. Where would we be today if someone hadn't shared the good news of Jesus with us? Let's pray. Father God, we love you, and we want others to know you and to love you as well. That we pray that we would be quick to obey when you prompt us, Holy Spirit, to speak up. May we be those that just can't stop telling others the good news of Jesus. We pray this in your matchless, precious name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, friends. Have a great day. God bless.